Okay, so first, we look at the cholera. Okay, cholera is not a new disease like COVID, but it's persists in this uh, world for many, 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 I mean, uh, decades already. Okay. Right, okay, yeah, okay. So, cholera is caused by the bacterium. The bacterium called I highlight. You need to know the name of the bacteria. So, write down this is a bacteria. Whenever bacteria involve one of the treatments, it's a general concept, very simple. Right? If you know that bacteria is involved, then we won't run away from antibiotics. Okay, in part of the treatment, it's just that it's either it's a first line or second line treatment in this case. Okay, so first line means that immediately we give antibiotic, or second line means that we give other treatment first, then only use antibiotic. Antibiotics can help us to cure. Always remember, right? In this case, we want to cure. Okay, uh, treatment basically they understand the, uh, the concept. Treatment means that we treat a symptom. Oh, diarrhea. Oh, so we stop the diarrhea. Oh, fever. We reduce the body temperature. Okay. Coughing, we stop coughing, but we don't remove the underlying cause. To remove the underlying cause, in this case, for example, cholera, we need to use antibiotics to kill the pathogen. Okay? So this is how Biblio cholera actually look like with the flagella. Okay? With the flagella. So again, it's a bacteria, it's a prokaryotic cells. Okay? It's a prokaryotic cells. Yeah? So now, mode of transmission, foodborne, waterborne. Okay, so for example, poor sanitation. Okay, then we didn't sanitize the water or, or, or they have no clean water supply. Okay, or you have this contaminated food, right? something called oral fecal, right? Fecal oral, sorry, fecal oral means that from feces to your mouth. Okay, it sounds like very disgusting, disgusting, but again, a lot of times you do not know. Right? A person with the cholera, it can be the chef, it can be the one that prepared the food. Okay, if they don't have proper sanitization, uh, sanitization, uh, yes, you didn't sanitize the, uh, the hands, then when you prepare the food, then yep, it's how it spread. So if food bonds and water bonds, so what is the side infection? Definitely the side infection will be. Uh, Gastrointestinal tract, eh? gastrointestinal tract, eh? small intestine, particularly and large intestine. Okay, so now we look at this mechanism action of cholerogen. So, what is cholerogen? Cholerogen actually is a toxin right now produced, right? It's a toxin produced by the bacteria, okay? Vibrio cholerae. So, you look at this figure. Okay, figure 13.9 show the mechanism action of cholerogen. It's a toxin released by Vibrio cholerae. So you can see that what actually happened here. Now look at this. Huh? We do have this receptor called ganglioside receptor. Ganglioside receptor. Huh? So this ganglioside receptor actually, okay, so happened that cholera toxin, the cholerogens can bind to this receptor and trigger the cell signaling pathway. Can I say that? So involve the adrenaline cyclist activity. It's something like the G protein, okay? G protein copper receptor. Okay? So when this thing happens, you can see that cholera toxin consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven subunit. So this B subunit can com combine to the binding site. Means that the shape is complementary to the shape of the binding site on the receptor. So they bind. Once they bind, it will cause the A1. Subunit and A2 subunit should be entered into the cells. So, this A1 subunit will cause increase in adrenal cyclase and a series of reactions. Can you see that? The second messenger. Okay, adrenal cyclase converts ATP to CMP. So, with the increased CMP, you can see that the leakage made a series of reaction signaling cause the openings of some of this ion channel. So, therefore, sodium ion leak out, chloride ion leak out, K plus leak out. Bicarbonate ion leak out. So there's a loss of the cell's nutrient. When there's a loss of cell nutrient, what happened? This sodium, chloride, potassium, and bicarbonates, they are water soluble. So when they are water soluble, so it means that they're going to lower the water potential, water molecule follow. So it will cause the diarrhea. So dehydration is one of the the, the compound or the, 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 the uh, complications in this case. Eh? So now this part, the mechanical action of cholerogens, you do not need to know in detail. Okay, no question will ask you, but this question actually come out in this 
Cambridge exam before, so that's why I put it in here. Okay? So cholera is a serious diarrheal disease that can be deadly if untreated because why? You're going to lose the water. Okay, you lose dehydrated is the, the, the consequence. Okay, it is caused by eating foods or drinking water contaminated with the bacterium. So the virus, the bacterium, okay, the pathogen here is called Vibrio chloride. So to reach their sites or actions, small intestine, the bacteria have to pass through the stomach. So this is the part that why I mean normally when we have pH, low pH of the stomach, yes, no problem, then we'll be able to cure that. So if the content are sufficiently acidic, less than 4.5, the bacteria are unlikely to survive. However, if the bacteria do not do reach the small intestine, for example, don't know how, don't know why, your, your stomach is not so acidic, they reach the small intestine. So they will multiply and secrete a toxin known as cholerogen, okay? which will disrupt the function of the epithelial lining so that the salts and water, so the salt here can write down sodium, particularly chloride. Okay, and water molecule leave the blood. If it causes severe diarrhea and loss of fluid, can be fatal if we don't treat it within twenty four hours. Okay. Now, how you know is the the difference between cholera and also the normal diarrhea. Cholera diarrhea, you 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 produce what we call a very fluid uh, stool. We call rice water stool. Something like very fluid porridge. Something like that, then you know that you are you having cholera already. Okay, so the B subunit, I say that ring of the B subunit ring of the cholera toxin will bind to the gangrocyte. Okay, this is a receptor on the surface of the target cells. So once the bound, sorry, twice that means our term. Okay, bind to the GM one gangrocyte receptor. Okay. So on the surface of the target cells, once bound, the entire toxin complex is endocytosed by the cells and chloratoxin A1 chain is released by the reductions of the disulfide bridge. And this is extra information only. Okay? So then this CTA1, chloratoxin A1, is then free to bind with a human partner protein called ADP ribosylation factor 6, ARF6, activating the G protein. Again, okay, using the NAD. So increase the G protein activation lead to increase adenylyl cyclase activities to remember, which increase the intracellular concentration of cyclic AME, which are more than 104 over normal and over activity, uh, activates the cytosolic protein kinase A. So again, G protein activated, adrenal cyclase activity increase, CMP, which is the second messenger. Okay then it will activate the protein kinase A. So this part you need to know, but not for this only is general G protein couple receptor activities. Okay? So the active PKA then phosphorate the cystic fibrosis transferring conductance regulator. Sorry. Cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator chloride channel protein will lead to ATP mediated if plugs of the chloride ions and leads to release of potassium. K plus and bicarbonate. Again, uh, I don't know why my bicarbonate is pH CO3 minus okay? into the intestinal rumen. So accumulation of ion lower the water potential, create a steep water potential gradient. So osmosis take place, rapid loss of the fluids, and leads to dehydration. Okay, so don't worry about this. Cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator chloride ion channel protein. This one. When I say no worry, it's only for AS, we're going to look at NA2, okay? Under one disease called cystic fibrosis, okay? Under disease named cystic fibrosis, okay? So, cholera, okay? If you had a sewage treatment, provisional, the provisions of the clean pipe water is very un, it's very very rare. But area of the world where cholera endemic, I can see use the word endemic, you know, it's not pandemic anymore, cholera. It's not the whole world happen at the same time. So the common cause of outbreaks includes no sewage treatment, increasing quantity of untreated feces, country that have huge debt, okay? Or they use a raw human sewage to irrigate the vegetable, right? Like a lot of time we see that organic, organic. So, but if you use a human, the raw human sewage that not treated, right? It will be causing this, okay? 
So three quarter of the infected people may be symptomless. Okay, so they are the carrier. So it means that they will contaminate the water supply and infect the person handle the food or cooking utensil without washing the hand. Yes, that is how bacteria can be transmitted. Okay, treatment you just need to know. Okay, a bit. So in this case, we start with the treatment. First line treatment, we don't use antibiotic yet. Because why? We want to rehydrate. So first thing we give the oral rehydration therapy. Rehydrate the person first. Okay, so it contain the glucose. So this glucose absorbs into the blood and take the ion with it. Okay, so the rehydration therapy makes sure the patient fluid intake equal to fluid loss to maintain the osmotic balance of the fluid and the blood first. Then in conjunction with the hydration, then we treat with antibiotics. So first, this one second. Okay, so we we, we have some now. Okay, but. Okay, but we don't actually uh, need to remember, just need to know antibiotics. So you can see that the bait, sick bait, so they purposely open the hole here. Why? Because of the diarrhea. It's not like, okay, have to go to toilets, okay, you, you won't have enough toilet, right, because it's an outbreak. Okay, and then you can see the IV dripped, okay, for the antibiotics and also the uh, rehydration salts. So travel from area free of cholera to those area endemic used to be advised vaccinated, but now no more. Because why? Because bacteria remain intestine where it's beyond the reach of the antibodies. So you, you, have, you can produce antibody, but it can't. Okay, actually reach the bacteria. Okay, can? Okay, uh, and also one thing is, uh, unless the bacteria enter into the bloodstream, then yes, it will trigger. If no, it will trigger the release of the antibody as well. Okay, so as I said, that we need to know okay, pathogen, mode of transmissions, and also site of infections. You know? So, Vibrio cholera is a bacteria. Okay, so food bond, water bond, site infection, war or small intestine. Okay, so rice water stew, can you see that? It's something like a porridge. Okay, huh? so method diagnosis, we look at the feces under the microscope, then you can see the bacteria. So history outbreak, I mean, it's a different strands. So we have O1, start with O1. Then from O1, then mutation take place with L2. Okay, and currently we know, I mean, in 1992, with O139. And currently, you can see that in Haitians in 2010, there is an outbreak. Okay, so sample cholera, okay, it's a sub O1, a strain found in South Asia, like Pakistan, and also Nepal, uh, India, those other places. Okay, so no need to worry about this history of the outbreak, you can read it by your own. Okay, but one thing I want to talk about this is you can see that. Okay, it took L2 two years to replace the O1, but 0139 replaced L2 in less than two months. So it's more virulent. And previously, those that have exposed to L2 now no immunity to 0139. So question may give you this scenario and ask you to explain why. Now, again, compared to L2 strands and 0139, we know that there is a major mutation take place already, okay? Until they change the surface antigens, until we don't have the immunity in this case. Can you see that? Okay, so it's the change in the antigens, okay? The surface antigen. Yeah. So we do have the, another outbreak in 2016, quite near, okay? I mean, the reasons in Yemen, again, it's due to the um, war. You can see that this is a picture capture in the Yemen, so where you can see that they, they don't have the proper water supply, they drink water from, it means this, uh, not, uh, this is not the clean water, okay, the sewage water, so therefore you can see that that is outbreak of the uh, cholera. Okay? So with this, I've done for the cholera of the record.